Haslina and also Pingiran Aki. Um, how are you today? I know that this has been a very long day. So I hope like, um, thank you so much for really having this with us. Um, Haslina Taib, you have actually spent 20 years in Europe and North American has held positions in audit, IT, implementation, name it all, because you have a long <laughs> list of forensic, tax, treasury, yeah. management, media, and real estate. I mean, you actually have a very extensive experience. And currently, as I mentioned before, you're the CEO of Dynamic Technologies, where she leads national digital transformation projects and advocates for emerging technology. And Pingiran Aki started his career with HSBC as part of the retail banking team, and he is now currently the CEO of Standard Chartered Brunei. Now, uh, let's start with our uh, episode by really sharing uh, a short brief about this episode. So this episode is special as it forms part of our recent concluded tripartite forum today held on the 10th of June, 2024 where we have the parliamentarians, policy makers and business leaders convened to discuss and devise strategies aimed at bolstering cyber resilience and enhancing ASEAN's digital economy. Now, following the successful conclusion of the Tripartite Forum, today's episode will explore the discussions and insights from this significant event and will shed light on the landscape of ASEAN's digital economy and emphasize the crucial collaboration among the policymakers, business and parliamentarians in navigating the challenges and opportunities of the digital age. Now, without further ado, let's dive in. So first question that I'm going to ask, and of course I'm going to ask to both of you is, with your extensive background in the private sector, how do you wish ASEAN to address the issue of cybersecurity and its impact on the digital economy. Hasina, you can start off first. Thank you, thank you. Um, so it's exciting to actually uh, be uh, in the conference today. You know, it's difficult to actually put everyone in the same room, right? And it's quite rare. And I believe this is the first time uh, for ASEAN anyway, to put the parliamentarian, policymakers, and business people together. Mm. So, um, so I thought, Complementing this approach, um, I believe ASEAN should prioritize public-private partnerships uh, to strengthen our cybersecurity posture. The private sector, with its advanced technology and expertise, can play a crucial role um, in developing innovative cybersecurity solutions. Moreover, we need to invest in cybersecurity education and awareness program to build a culture of security among businesses and consumers. This holistic approach will ensure that our digital economy is resilient and capable of sustaining long-term growth. Thank you, Haslina. Pingiran Aki, what about your thoughts, please? Thank you very much. Excellency Yanti. I, th I, I echo Juan Haslina's view uh, earlier on uh, as well. And, but in addition, I like to share that you know cybersecurity is a is a foundational element for driving digital economy, and from my perspective, ASEAN should focus on harmonising regulatory frameworks across member states to create a cohesive cybersecurity strategy. Now, this involves not only establishing robust laws but also ensuring their enforcement is consistent across the region. Of course, um, where I sit and represent the broader APEC region offers valuable insights into managing cybersecurity challenges. APEC economies are diverse with varying levels of digital maturity and regulatory frameworks. This, diver this diversity necessitates a coordinated approach to cybersecurity, emphasizing regional cooperation and harmonized standards. But we also learn uh, some lessons uh, from the APEC, where we can also work and collaborate together with ASEAN uh, economies, uh, including the strategies that has been put out, particularly in areas such as cross-border data flows, digital trade, facilitation, and best practices in cybersecurity. And by, by aligning ASEAN's cyber, cybersecurity initiatives with, um, with uh, those in the APEC region, 
we can enhance regional resilience, foster innovation, and ensure the secure and sustainable growth of the digital economies. So how do you anticipate the ASEAN Digital Economic Framework Agreement, DEFA? Um, we've actually heard uh, the Deputy Sekjen um, um, from the ASEAN Secretariat Economic Community just now actually mentioned with regards to DEFA that will actually can, can impact the business sector and uh, what specific benefits or challenges do you foresee for businesses operating within the ASEAN region? So perhaps I can actually ask that to Haslina first. Mm. So I think, you know, uh, we, we all know that uh, DEFO is, is an exciting um, uh, agreement because it is uh, following the uh, Bandar Sri Begawan Master Plan, right? So uh, ASEAN is focusing. I, I'm not saying that APEC is not focusing. Uh, mm -hmm. ASEAN um, Business Council and ASEAN uh, mm -hmm. generally are focusing and getting targeted uh, um, uh, ingredients of uh, the Bandar Sri Begawan Master Plan for Digital Transformation. So DEFA impact on the, on the tech sector uh, uh, especially is, is quite profound. Um, what it offers is a, 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 an immense potential for tech startups and MSME by reducing the barriers to entry. And we talk about this for a very long time. I know when I was in APEC, we talk about reducing barriers to entry, but these days it's, it's different. You know, mm. technically uh, with all the big platform being, being put forward, uh, it's easy for MSME and startup to get in. So now uh, we, we are providing a, a larger market scale operations, right? Not just uh, being partners to the big MNC, but now we actually say, look, this is a platform we can actually onboard you as quickly as possible. Not just, you know, when we get the, the project itself, then we'll, we'll bring you in. Now, the, the challenge lies in uh, ensuring that all member states are at comparable level of digital readiness. So, um, uh, bridging the digital divide um, through targeted investments and, and digital infrastructure and skill development is essential to ensure the benefits of DEFA are evenly distributed across the region. Um, so this this lead me to talk about what we uh, had a sneak preview earlier, mm -hmm. and I'm very focused on this uh, uh, last year during the uh, ASEAN, um, actually ASEAN Indonesia, and now uh, ASEAN uh, 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 Laos, right? It's it's uh, Cambodia as well. But the the the, the thing that I we notice uh, again and again is inclusion actually staring our face for uh, rural area uh, during the twenty. Uh, during your chairmanship mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, ASEAN BAC, um, we talk about inclusion, right? Yes. It was COVID time. Mm. So, so we thought um, some of the small businesses, some of the individual professional are, um, uh, are actually uh, find it difficult to actually go on board during, the, during COVID. Mm. Uh, some of them lose their job, you know, because the infrastructure is not there. So we launched uh, today, well, we, did, we haven't launched, we will launch it in October. Uh, for the Borneo Economic uh, Community uh, discussion, but we had a sneak preview of Tenon and Karyadi. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit, th th there's an Indonesian there, because <laughs> during our year, we, we launched uh, uh, ASEAN Credential. Mm -hmm. So we got Tenon, um, which is which is a, a fabric, if you mm -hmm. like, of, of, of threads. But Karyadi is uh, Karya, which is uh, talent, mm -hmm. and D as in digital. But in Malay, you put it the other way around. You right. know, right? It's Karya D, right? And D uh, uh, digital uh, uh, skills. So, um, so, so Tenon uh, is a, a trade and employment and employment nexus for unified data analytics. Right? It stands for that. But it's also inspired by, like I said, data fabrics approach. Tenon, um, a Malay word. Uh, aims to seamlessly connect data centers of excellence across uh, uh, the island, first uh, Borneo and hopefully in the region itself. So through Tenon, uh, we're establishing a knowledge hub for data analytics and AI uh, pro for professionals. So individuals mm -hmm. is working as nomads in, in our Borneo economic community. So the, it collaborates data-driven digital transformation uh, not just you know producing some app without any data, uh, so we will actually hopefully share the data and somebody can design it. Um, so, but it also facilitates the collection of uh, uh, data, the, uh, doing the integration, uh, and also what we talk about on the ASEAN level, 
which is distributing the trade uh, for businesses uh, within Borneo itself. Um, Karyadi is a Borneo digital talent. Uh, it aims to lower the barrier uh, uh, for, to onboard digital talents to contribute transformation. And this use uh, low code. So it's easy. Uh, low code is like a, a language, um, uh, an open language that is like a jigsaw puzzle where you actually could put things together. So it's easy for even me uh, to, to remember how to code. So uh, hopefully those people who have got functional knowledge can actually be taught using low code and they too can actually uh, uh, supply a supply of talents within Borneo and ASEAN as well. So hopefully all this rural area can easily be on board uh, to, to participate in our tra digital transformation. It sounds so exciting and I'm <laughs> so looking forward for the, for the launching um, in October, Haslina. Pranaki, what are your thoughts, please? Thank you. Likewise, I, I, I also echo that. Um, I mean, it's amazing uh, to see uh, you know, the Benon and Kaya uh, uh, in progress and uh, looking forward for the launching, uh, Haslina. Uh, but coming back to what um, uh, DEFA is, right? Uh, and it was mentioned earlier on uh, today in, in one of the keynote addressed by um, the Deputy Secretary General. Um, uh, uh, you, you know, in my view, DEFA is uh, set to revo revo revolutionize the business landscape in ASEAN, um, you know, by facilitating uh, smoother cross-border digital transactions and improving uh, market access um, for businesses and for the communities as well. Uh, where in the line that I am in for financial services especially, this means greater opportunities um, for digital banking and fintech innovations which uh, can drive financial inclusions and economic growth. And currently, I think, um, uh, currently, you know, in Brunei, we are working on a national digital payment hub to be able, you know, for us um, to have smooth um, and flawless transactions and be able to uh, have real-time transactions um, to be connected cross-border uh, as well. So I think it's, you know, with DEFA uh, in place, I think it, it is very, very crucial and it will, I believe it's going to be very, very helpful as well. Uh, but at the same time, however, uh, businesses will need to navigate the, com you know, the complexities um, because uh, different, different markets, different, different um, economies might have different uh, regulatory environment, uh, you know, and, you know, they need to ensure the compliance with regional standards as well. Uh, and sometimes this can be challenging, uh, you know, so th that's why they, uh, I, I guess they need to uh, navigate that. Um, but, you know, uh, business associations, business councils like us, um, uh, we, we definitely play, play a pivotal role in shaping this um, uh, DEFA by providing critical insights and feedback from the private sector uh, at large. Because, um, so, so we act as a bridge, you know, between the businesses and the policymakers, ensuring that, you know, the framework addresses um, these real world challenges and opportunities uh, out there. So, for example, they can highlight the need in harmonizing regulations that facilitate cross border trade and investment, uh, share best, pra best practices in digital security, and advocate um, for policies that foster innovation and growth in the digital economy. Now, their involvement ensures that DEFA is not only comprehensive. Uh, but also practical and beneficial to businesses across the region. Now, according to the data that was shared um, from area, um, ASEAN experienced a loss of about 2.87 million. And due, this is because due to the attacks, um, cyber attacks in, in 2023 alone. Mm -hmm. um, and with financial services being the primary target and malware attacks being the top concern. Now, in light of this, how do you envision this tripartite forum contributing um, to the enhancement of the cybersecurity, ensuring a safer digital economy um, for ASEAN? Ms. Lina? Um, I think through innovation and education, um, business can develop and deploy cutting edge security solutions, you know, while uh, also participating in knowledge sharing initiatives. Mm. Um, no, I might add to that because uh, when, when I'm listening to the conference today, sometimes you know you start thinking the uh, technology, the technologist, um, when they talk about cyber securities, I don't know whether the whole room are actually able to understand and grasp. Mm. And then we got a, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a hack mm -hmm. uh, just now, an example. So that kind of like relate to everyone. So um, so whilst uh, the 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 tech industry um, talk about addressing innovatively, 
it needs to be understood mm. by, by, by the everyday people, by, by business people. So I, th I thought that uh, knowledge sharing initiatives uh, like such uh, could be uh, a lot more practical, but knowledge sharing initiatives are, are quite important. So I think, I guess, when uh, you put all these people together, right, policymakers, le uh, legislators, governments, and also mm -hmm. businesses, you, you, can, you can listen to all the different perspectives mm. and support these um, efforts by mm. creating uh, what I call the conducive environment, but a different definition completely when you actually look at each and listen to everyone talking a different language, you know. Um, uh, but, but this innovation, um, uh, we, we need to ensure in order to actually come up with a cybersecurity framework. Um, again, adapting to the fast evolving uh, digital landscape. Policymakers are very good with, with words. You know, businesses, we just want to do things like now, um, but we don't necessarily are uh, not able to, uh, um, uh, to, to your excellency, uh, to, to actually format it in a, in a, in a legal word. So mm. it would be good to put everyone in the same room after this tripartite mm. forum uh, to come up with a very uh, much more dynamic uh, and holistic approach uh, in uh, building a resilient uh, digital ecosystem in ASEAN uh, 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 as well. Mm. Bing Yun, what about, what about you? Yes, um, so, uh, you know, uh, the, the world out there is uh, you know, very challenging, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it's very, uh, very unpredictable. Uh, and in the digital um, uh, cyber space uh, particularly, uh, you, you know, absolutely right, we've seen such um, you know, a, a, a huge increase in level of scams uh, out there, here and there. I think the finance industry uh, specifically uh, has um, undergone, um, you know, major uh, challenges uh, in this area. Uh, but, you know, learning from today's forum, I, I, I believe that it, it is crucial for us, um, you know, uh, in, in terms of creating a comprehensive cybersecurity uh, strategy. You know, uh, it was amazing to have all these people together, parliamentarians can work on formulating um, stringent cybersecurity laws and fostering international cooperation. Financial institutions out there like us uh, can implement, you know, advanced cybersecurity technologies and share uh, threat intelligence, uh, which is vital for proactive threat management. Now, this collaboration ensures a, conti you know, a coordinated response uh, to cyber threats. Uh, protecting our digital economy uh, from significant, uh, significant financial loss. My final question is, as this forum marks the first collaboration among three key regional actors, mentioning parliamentarians, businesses and policymakers, from your perspective, as business leaders, what key points would you like to emphasize to policymakers and parliamentarians to strengthen our digital economy? Haslina. Thank you. Um, uh, this is a really difficult question because, you know, I could uh, zone in, right, or do things generally. But again, I want to keep emphasizing about capacity building mm. uh, and digital literacy. Um, uh, it, it's to prepare um, workforce for, for the digital economy. Um, you know, sometimes I wonder if we push for all these initiatives that do cross-border transactions between businesses like e-commerce, and, um, uh, and, and the skill and the cyber awareness, right, is different to what we talked about even two years ago, um, uh, let alone 10 years ago uh, when, when people uh, go for, for their education. So by the time they graduate three years, 10 years to become masters, you know, after degree, it, it, it's kind of like become quite, uh, I wouldn't call it irrelevant, not as advanced as the hackers, the, 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 uh, the people that actually come up with uh, a cybersecurity uh, configuration. So to me, um, the, this initiative is really important. Um, the, the continuous awareness uh, and learning of, of what is a threat out there. Mm. So furthermore, I think data protection and privacy regulation must be robust, right, to build consumer trust and ensure compliance to international standards. We talked about blockchain, uh, etc. Uh, you know, these, these are quite important. The, again, the, um, the uh, uh, legacy project that uh, we had during our Brunei year, mm. 
uh, both from from a, a talent um, building talent perspective, we got two legacy projects, mm. talent and also uh, the digital identity. It, it's really really key. Um, uh, when we talked about uh, we talked to Sekjen, uh, your counterparts, right? It's really difficult to actually get everyone together to harmonize the data, the mm -hmm. data flow. So what does it mean? So a policymaker need to ensure that uh, individual data, individual business transaction uh, and, and their assets are protected. Yeah. How is that protected uh, compared to other countries is a lot more important to look at it from a standards mm -hmm. pers perspective. Yeah. Um, so we must ensure compliance with international standards. Whether or not we should have uh, data for the ASEAN uh, standards, uh, uh, we are thinking about it. Um, uh, if, if there is any, we want it to be a little bit more practical again mm. uh, and, and a lot more conducive to the today's environment. So supporting uh, MSMEs and startups through incentive is also another uh, thing to, to, to do to drive the economic growth. Uh, and innovation, and uh, again, you know what was being announced earlier on Tenun and Karyadi to prepare Borneo digital talents could could then uh, be a study to actually expand it to to ASEAN itself. If you remember, um, uh, this actually originate. Uh, I, I know that during the uh, the, the sneak peek review uh, preview just now, I spoke to about the uh, uh, the Smart Nation office in Brunei. I talked about the Sarawak uh, uh, Development uh, uh, Digital uh, Development uh, Council, but if you remember, it started off with this idea that we talked about um, while having coffee. And um, uh, do you remember curry puff? Um, <laughs> so we we talk about we, we always chase after this big curry puff. It's the size of a crab, uh, <laughs> but inside it's actually meat itself, actually more potatoes. So we said to ourselves. There is a really small school in a rural area, she said, that we should, there is no access to internet. That would be a challenge mm. for us to actually mm. see whether the policy mm. and the businesses can include them, mm. right, the mm. school, mm. And, and develop their, 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 their skill set by putting in some uh, laptop, some, some Wi Fi in there, and then actually have a, a challenge in terms of uh, programming. And that was uh, something that is in a small scale, mm. and I know that you um, you ask for, for for businesses to actually promote that idea, mm. and I'm glad to say that we actually has extended that idea, oh, and this is I think what Tenun and Kariadi is now being oh. developed. Well done. I mean, I I, I remember that coffee yeah. talk that <laughs> we actually had, um, because we we want to make sure um, children students have the accessibility, mm. and we want to make it inclusive, just because they don't actually have access by road, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a disadvantage for the for the kids. And thank you so much for that. I mean like now you're oh, you're making you. the dream <laughs> come true, um, especially for, for the children. Mm. Right. And and also those in the really um so rural areas that we, we actually talked about. And and that's that's really a good news. And I mean this is what we actually wanted like business leaders to say like, you know, we have this platform mm -hmm. and then we want to really um, share this, you know, to others. Thank you. Puniran. Um, I, I just probably, again, uh, similarly like uh, for Naslina, you know, like to emphasize uh, the importance of unified cybersecurity, right? Um, um, you know, the standards across the region, you know, across ASEAN. Uh, consistency in the in the regulations will, will definitely, I believe, facilitate uh, smoother cross-border uh, operations and enhance overall uh, security. Now, additionally, investing in robust digital infrastructure is crucial um, to support the increasing volume of digital transactions and activities um, that we expect um, as you know each and every economy grows um, uh, around the region. Uh, also, at the same time, policymakers should also focus on fostering an environment that encourages innovation and supports the growth of digital financial services. Now, from the private sector side, the following uh, approaches can be taken. I have a few things that I want to just you know mention. Uh, firstly, you know, advocate for regulatory harmonization. Uh, uh, basically, you know, to engage with policymakers to promote the alignment of cybersecurity regulations across ASEAN, as I mentioned earlier, ensuring a coherent and uh, an efficient regulatory environment. Uh, again, invest in cybersecurity infrastructure. You know, we, where you can allocate you know resources 
to enhance cybersecurity measures within their organizations, including adopting advances, technologies, and training employees uh, uh, you know, on best practices. Also at the same time, foster innovation. Um, this is basically you know, support the development and implementation of innovative digital solutions that enhance security and efficiency in financial services. And last but not least, um, you know, uh, the, the, always the word collaboration. I think the word collaboration is always key wherever it is, right? Uh, in, in each activity, each initiative that we do, we collaborate across, you know, uh, each uh, sections. We, you know, the, the participation of the, the, the public and the private partnerships uh, are, are crucial and forums uh, like this uh, are equally um, important for us to share knowledge, best practices, you know, sh uh, uh, exchange of um, knowledge and ideas. Uh, so this is merely, you know, for strengthening the collective cybersecurity, you know, posture of the region um, uh, at large. Nyon Aki and Haslina, thank you so much for joining us uh, in this episode. Um, sharing your insights and i think we've actually had so many interesting discussion um just on the tripartite mm -hmm. forum and um we hope that you know we can actually continuously have this forum again hopefully uh, we can actually do it next year um during the chairmanship of malaysia so thank you so much for listening to ipacast and stay tuned for more episodes and don't forget to follow our social media